Welcome to the Free Flowing Health Podcast, where we invite you to embark on a transformative journey towards a healthier, happier, more fulfilling life. Each episode brings you a dynamic exploration of the diverse aspects of health, wellness, and healing. I'm your host, Lisa Brown. Join me as I engage in intimate conversations with inspirational guests who share their unique stories and insights. These conversations will take you beyond conventional thinking, encouraging you to break free from the constraints of a one-size-fits-all healing approach. Our mission is to empower you with the knowledge, tools, and motivation needed to inspire real change. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Welcome back, everyone, to the Free Flowing Health Podcast. It's a rainy day here in Southwest Florida. Today's guest is tuning in from Chicago. She's a licensed esthetician, and we're going to dive deep into the topic of how gut health affects skin health. And I'm really excited to talk about this, especially because as a teen, I was somebody who suffered terribly from hormonal issues, a face full of cystic acne, which led to depression, anxiety, and a whole host of other issues. And it took me literally a decade to figure out that what I was eating really was affecting my external health. So Samantha, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. So we're going to get into, you know, you're a mom, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner. We'll talk about the, uh, uh, the company that you just launched. But to start, I would love to hear a little bit about your journey and your story and how you came to be a, an esthetician. Yeah. So I've been an esthetician for 21 years and I didn't go into aesthetics um, because of my skin. I kind of fell into it by accident, but as I got into my twenties and I wanted to start a family, I went off birth control and suddenly I was dealing with adult acne, which I never had acne. So this was a first for me. And you know, going to esthetician school, we learned how to treat acne. So I was doing all the right protocols, all the right treatments, using the right products, and nothing was clearing up my skin. And it was very frustrating because I remember trying to help other people with acne. And I remember thinking like, how can I help them with their skin if I can't even help my own skin? So it was very frustrating. Um, And then I was lucky when I was pregnant, I have three babies, but when I was pregnant, my skin was clear with each pregnancy. So I was just like, oh, this is probably hormonal acne and it eventually will clear up. So <clears throat> after baby number three, I had a lot of weight to lose. And a friend of mine who was a dietitian was like, you should try this gut cleanse. It's only 14 days. You'll drop all the baby weight. And I was like, great, let's do it. So yes, I dropped the baby weight, but I actually might notice for the first time my skin cleared up and it was like clear within a week. And then once I started eating more inflammatory foods, my skin started breaking out again. So that's when I started going down that rabbit hole of like realizing, okay, acne isn't just topical. Like I was taught acne is actually coming from inside the body and it's an inflammatory response to our gut health. So I've been on a mission ever since. (laughs) I love that. And it's so important. I wish I knew somebody like you when I was just a teenager or young adult, because Mm-hmm. having been raised on the standard American diet and eating yep. tons of processed inflammatory foods and not making that connection, going to the doctors, dealing with issues, being put on birth control when I was not even sexually active for, you know, you know, cyst on my ovaries and things like that. And, you know, just the uh, stress, the lifestyle, the over caffeinating, the not sleeping. Uh, but really my gut was really messed up and, you know, I, I suffered on a daily basis And then, you know, going to the doctor and they put me on Accutane as well and all of these different things and struggling with the psychological effects of having a face full of cystic acne, everybody pointing it out, trying to be well-intentioned. Oh, you know, have you tried this? Have you tried that? Spending thousands of dollars on every single over-the-care, you know, product. This is before I got into natural health and began to make dietary changes. So um, can you just take us through that process then of, you know, what exactly did you have to change about your diet? I know you said you did this gut cleanse. Like, what was that process like? What was the timeline? And what kind of improvements did you see even beyond maybe skin? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I lost weight. It was a 14 day gut cleanse. And it got rid of all of those inflammatory foods like um, soy, peanuts, eggs, dairy, gluten, sugar. Um, for me, I feel like it was gluten, dairy and sugar. Those were the big ones. And I feel like that's very common for most people. Um, 
you know, and it, it's interesting because it's like, I was at that, in that space where I was willing to give up all those foods, but a lot of times, you know, and I have this struggle with clients all the time. I'm like, you have to make this decision. Like you have to make a lifestyle change. You have to want to do it. And I feel like that's a struggle for a lot of people. Like they have to be, they have to want it bad enough. Otherwise they're not going to make the changes. But I feel like, you know, gluten, dairy, sugar. I mean, now there's even studies proving that dairy yeah. and acne go hand in hand. So that was one of the first things actually that I gave up and began to find some alternatives. And for me, it wasn't like a quick fix. I didn't have all of that information. And especially because my face was literally covered like every square right. inch of it. So, you know, it took me like a couple of years, but then also finding a holistic uh, esthetician to work on the external portion of it for many, many months, if not like right. years to get rid of all of the scarring and to use some of the more natural stuff, like the, uh, I guess the fruit peels and things like that. So obviously, you know, it's a huge, uh, there's a huge internal component, but how do you, do you actually coach the, the people that come in like with the acne? Is it a process that you take them through? Are they open to hearing what you have to say? Or is it just like, they don't want to hear about it and just work on me externally and get rid of my acne? Because yeah. we know that doesn't work. Right. I, I would say it's 50, 50, um, with most people, like, especially, I feel like teenagers are the most resistant, like the parents want it more than the kid, I feel like. And the kids are like, but I don't want to stop eating pizza or fast food. So, you know, I feel like that's always such a struggle. Um, adults tend to be a little bit more open. And I feel like sometimes, you know, I will have them go through a food journal because I'm an esthetician. So technically my scope of practice is the skin. I can make suggestions. I can recommend right. things. I can say, say, oh, try it, read it, read this book or watch this YouTube video if, if their skin's not clearing up within a couple of months, I will refer them out to like a naturopathic doctor, a functional medicine doctor, just because it's like, that's their field of expertise and they can help them and pinpoint exactly what's causing that inflammation. Right. So you're serving as a guide and then like, you know, yeah. providing them with resources, which is also a really important, you know, part of right. their journey to begin to heal. So, mm -hmm. okay. Let's, let's say somebody takes this information to heart. They make these changes, they see improvements. And then they're dealing with, like I was dealing with the aftermath of right. all of these scars and hyperpigmentation. And I don't know all the technical terms, yeah. but what, what can you do as a licensed esthetician then to help them on their journey to, you know, find that beautiful, radiant, vibrant, glowing skin once they heal from the right. inside out, but they're still left with the aftermath. Right. Yeah. Um, it depends on the severity. I mean, there's, you know, there's topical things like enzymes we can use, like you were saying, you've done fruit enzyme peels. Um, vitamin C is really good. I always, always, always SPF because as, anytime you're out in the sun and your skin's not protected, it's just going to darken those areas more. Like even just driving around in your car, I call it accidental sun exposure because it's those times where like, oh, I'm just going to go run to the store really quick. Oh, while I'm out, I'm going to go run here. And it's like, those are the times we get the most sun damage because we're not thinking about protecting our skin. So it's like, I always tell everybody, keep it with you, be extra diligent. The minute you know you're going to go somewhere, put it on your face because any sort of sun is just going to darken those areas. Um, there's a new treatment that I just launched um, a couple months ago called microchanneling. So it's like a less invasive version of microneedling where it's very superficial, but it can actually heal and um, help with some of those deeper acne scars. So there's lots of things we can do, but I never recommend doing that until the skin's totally clear, because if you're still breaking out, you're still going to be suffering with those mm -hmm. scarring. So, and what about like Accutane or all of these things that doctors prescribe? Would you advise against that? Can you talk yes. a little bit about yes. the negative impact of taking those sorts of drugs? Yeah. I mean, any, any antibiotic, even when you just go to the dermatologist and then they're like, here, take this antibiotic. It always attacks the gut. And it's like, the gut is why you're breaking out. So while it might temporarily clear that breakup, break out, out, it's going to come back because you're still targeting the gut and the gut is still in, in an inflamed state. And I will say that my parents, you know, took me to the doctor as a kid. I was sick all the time. So many antibiotics in addition to such a poor diet. Yeah. And having, you know, no way to process the amount of stress that I was under. So maybe like in my case, it wasn't just a two week cleanse. I, I eventually did several deep 
organ cleanses, including the gut, but it took me so much time. So probably the severity of what's happening within and how many rounds of antibiotics and how many drugs that you put into your system, not knowing the ill effects. So I'm sure that it's not like a one size fits all two week protocol is going to heal right. everything, but I think it's a great starting point. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about the line, the skincare line that you created? Yeah, we can. I would love to. Yeah. Yeah. So I just launched a skincare line for tweens and teens um, because I don't know if you're aware, <laughs> I have a tween daughter and I have two boys that are tweens and teens as well. But um, what is a tween, tween, by the way? Sorry. Okay. You tweens are like, tween I would say ages seven to 12. So like okay, that, cool. -teen, we, we call them preteens. Now they're called tweens, but <laughs> um, love it. Okay. But these influencers on social media are telling them to start using retinol, glycolic acid, and all these crazy adult products at the age of seven. So I created a skincare line that's safe and effective um, and simple. So that way, the goal is to establish a good skincare routine from a young age. So that way, as they get older, as they develop acne or any kind of other issues, they already have that foundation. So that's kind of my goal with the skincare line. Now, is it like, what is in it? Is it all natural? Can you speak to that? Or is that like top secret yeah. right now? <laughs> no, I mean, it has, it has okay. a lot of natural ingredients in it. My moisturizer has this chaga mushroom extract, so it's anti-inflammatory. So it will help calm the skin. Um, it's actually really good for acne. Like even my adult acne clients that are a little bit on the oilier side, like that moisturizer is phenomenal. So while it's marketed towards tweens, I can, I can use it on adults as well. I love just consuming shaga in like the form of a tea. Yeah. Um, so what are, what are some of the top foods that you recommend that people begin to in introduce more of to ensure good gut health? We talked about some of the inflammatory foods, but yeah. are there some of your favorites that you can speak to now? Yeah, I actually, a couple months ago went carnivore. So I'm strictly eating like meat, mostly protein eggs. Um, I actually found soy free eggs, which is actually really hard to find. Um, but I feel like protein is one of those things like our body needs it because it has all those essential amino acids that our body needs to stay healthy. And so I feel like a lot of vegetarians struggle with that component because they're not getting enough protein in their body. And I feel like protein is one of those things that really helps our gut heal. I do work hard at it. I actually been vegan for almost 20 years and, okay. you know, I just, <laughs> but it's all good. You know, it's like, there's yeah. so many uh, different paths out there. And right. Protein exactly. is important, especially as somebody who's like really active and I do Spartan yeah. races and all of that. So I definitely started even recently trying to track and count my macros mm -hmm. and just ensure that I'm getting enough. So, okay. Right. We have protein, like whatever, mm -hmm. you know, the amino yeah. acids, uh, is there anything else that you recommend? Do you take pre or probiotics? Uh, what else do you do? Yeah, I do a probiotic every morning. Um, just cause I'm always concerned with gut health. I take, um, electrolytes, I do all my vitamins, like vitamin C, vitamin D. I do zinc. Um, you know, I would just say, like, I always tell clients, like, listen to your body. If you're eating something that is causing you to feel like really bloated and uncomfortable, yeah. that's your body telling you you're, you're, it doesn't like that food. And I know everybody's body is so different and responds to so many different things. But it's like, I feel like we just kind of brush off like bloating, gas, headaches, like those kind of symptoms. And that's just our body trying to communicate with us. Right. So we need to really develop that deeper awareness. Our body is sending us messages and, right. you know, more often than not, it's deemed as normal. So, you know, you're farting all day long, your stomach hurts after a meal and you're paying no attention until it gets worse and worse and worse. And you have, right. you know, intestinal permeability and things are leaking and it's like really out of control and really hard to come back from. Yeah. So I think that's really important. Um, mm -hmm. so what else, what else would you like to talk about? You know, this is your profession. This is, you see clients on a daily basis. Obviously you're influencing yeah. them in a positive way. You discovered right. that link between gut health and skin health. So what else would you like to share with yeah. our audience? I mean, I would just talk about like skin, like how to support the skin, because, you know, I feel like, especially when new clients come to me, whether they have acne or not, everybody's using so many different products because this influencer is like, use this, use that. Yeah. There's just so much noise and information out there. And I feel like I'm at the point now where I have to like condense people's skincare routine and be like, okay, for the next 30 days, you're just going to wash your face and use a moisturizer. And they look at me like, are you crazy? But their skin is so out of balance and so dehydrated or sensitized. And just the, the 
their barriers compromised that it's not functioning correctly. So it's like, we literally have to strip the skin back down to the basics and then create like a new skincare um, routine from there. So I just feel like social media is actually hurting people's skin because everybody's just buying random stuff, hoping to achieve a result. And we're just not getting those results. Yeah. It's probably damaging, damaging people's health and their egos too, because yeah. you know, you can, you can apply that to any, any mm -hmm. industry and, you know, people pretending to be experts. And I know when I was younger, you know, social media really wasn't a thing just yet. So even just, right. you know, all the commercials and buying this product and that product or the, listening to the salesperson. And it was a really painful journey for me that took way too long. So it's right. good that, you know, like the internet is both a blessing and a burden. So we have so exactly. much information, but it's important to tune, tune out the noise and not listen to uh, influencers unless they're right. actually out there in the real world and they're educated and experienced mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. So what, what piece of advice would you give to any teen or tween that like myself has a face full of acne? They, they are surrounded by noise. They don't mm -hmm. know where to turn. They've tried everything. I mean, I know you already obviously touched on the whole like cleanse thing. Is that suitable for uh, teens and tweens to begin there? Or is there somewhere else they can begin? I mean, for them, it's their diet. You know, a lot of yeah, these kids yeah. are living on processed foods. I mean, I'm guilty of doing it too, because we're busy. I'm a single mom. It's like, sometimes it's just easy to just run and grab them something quick to eat because I don't have time to cook or if I'm working and have like too much going on. So I get it. Um, but I feel like it's the food. Like a lot of these, the food that is in our American diet, it's just attacking our gut and causing all these problems. So, you know, they, they, have to stop eating those inflammatory foods. So that you're really talking to the parents in this case, because more often right. than not, it's the parents that are, are responsible yeah. for feed, feeding the kids. Right. Um, yeah. So obviously you see a lot of clients and it, it's not a one size fits all, like we say here on the free flowing health right. podcast. So how do you determine what each client needs based on what you're seeing or feeling, or what does that process look like? So it depends on the type of acne, like some clients will come in and they just have it on their cheeks. Some, like you were saying, you had it all over when it's all over the face. That's when I refer out because I feel like when it's cystic like that, that's out of my scope of practice because mm -hmm. then that acne is coming from like the dermis, which is the deeper layers of skin. And there's no, like, there's nothing to extract because there's no blackheads at that point, because it's all, it's all inflammation from underneath the skin. So like, it just depends on, um, you know, the type of acne. If someone comes in and has it on their cheeks, we definitely talk about diet. You know, the three things I always tell them, start with dairy, do that for two weeks, you know, or keep a food journal, do that for 30 days. See if you can pinpoint, like write down everything you eat. And then at the end of the day, write down your skin. Like I had two breakouts or I had clear skin today. And then on those days you're breaking out, go back and kind of take a look, see if you can figure out, oh, I ate this, 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 and this on these days and I broke out. So just kind of being, you know, I feel like that awareness piece is huge because once we know, then we're more willing to make a change. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So keeping a food diary and maybe even delving deep into a, an elimination diet where you yeah. kind of get rid of all these inflammatory foods and right. really slowly begin to reintroduce them, keeping that journal because awareness is the first step to change. Um, yeah. yeah. So obviously gut health, what you put into your body, the food counts, but do you ever look at, you know, the human being as, you know, from a holistic perspective, the stress or not sleeping or anything like that affect the gut? Can you speak to some other factors that might influence gut and then be reflected through the skin and on the face? Yeah. I mean, even aging, you know, like hormonal mm -hmm. issues, like women that are going through menopause or perimenopause, I feel like that's a big one because yeah, a lot of them, their bodies are under a state of stress. They're not sleeping. They're not getting like you know, they're in that, um, their skin's starting to dry out. So it's like, there's all these different components. Um, again, I always try to go back to diet because, and the foods that they're eating, because when we're stressed, we tend to eat junk food because we're just like, I'll just grab this really quick, or I'm just not going to eat. Or, you know, I just feel like, um, you know, especially as women, you know, we're busy, we have kids, we have this, we have that, we have all these like moving parts. You know, when I was growing up, I feel like life was a lot simpler, <laughs> you know, now it's just, it's crazy and chaotic. And I feel like there's just more going on and it's just easier to grab food and 
you know, not cook. And I feel like, you know, my mother cooked every night. So there was always like home cooked meals. And I feel like there's, there's something to be said about that. Yeah. So that's like, I grew up the opposite and, you know, always eating on the goal, go, you know, working like full time, even as a teenager, I was an EMT starting at 18. So not only was it working like 12 to 16 hour shifts, at least three days a week and, you know, 40 plus hours, but it was also just grabbing food, really bad food and eating it as fast as I could. And then in, in school full time, and then trying to work out at the gym and not sleep and, so like, it's, it's also about the mindfulness around how we're eating our food. It's the food we eat, but it's also taking a breath, you know, obviously trying to eat uh, whole foods, non-processed, but the way in which we eat it. So your body can absorb the nutrition and, you know, it's almost counterintuitive and counterproductive to eat standing up or to eat really quickly to have yeah. a conversation. So trying to kind of free ourselves of distractions and take just a couple of minutes to eat slowly and mindfully and you know, free of distractions so your body can absorb. Um, right. Yeah. So is there anything else, I guess, you'd like to say about this topic? Any any more expertise you'd like to share? Um, you know, I would just say if someone is kind of in that state of frustration, whether it's acne, aging, or just your skin's just not looking the way it is, you know, I would I would just make a change, like a small change, like try to eliminate one food or try to kind of look for an esthetician or somebody that is in the holistic health field because they can help you. They can guide you, you know, trying to do all this research and follow influencers is just not going to give you those answers because everybody's opinionated. And most of these influencers are not trained or licensed or have the background, you know, they're just passionate about a topic and they're out there sharing information. So, you know, if you're, struggling, I would look for those experts who really can, you know, take a look at your whole body and really help guide you. And who are walking their walk and not just, right. you know, talking crap and then behind closed doors doing whatever Eating they're junk, doing, trying, yeah. to, trying to make money and this and that. <laughs> right. So, so yeah. thank you for your authenticity and yeah. how can people find you or connect with you? Or you said you don't really, do you, do you work with people like as a coach sometimes, or I know yeah. you're referring yeah. them out, but like, can they work with you? Yeah. Yeah. I do virtual stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, so give us know, some have, information. Yeah. And I have two estheticians that are working for me as well. So, but yeah, we're pretty busy. So, so, so if people are in Chicago, obviously they can come see you in person. If not, they can connect yeah. with you. So what it was your website yeah. or your social or your email, or yeah. how can people connect with you? So my website is skindeepil.com. And then on Facebook and Instagram, I'm skindeepil as well. Cool. So we'll put that in the show notes anyway. Okay. And any closing remarks? I know this was a short one, but we got straight That's to okay. the point. And I'm sure this will help yeah. somebody just yes, begin to think about like what, what I'm putting into my body may be impacting my external health. Yeah. I mean, that phrase, we are what we eat. It's It's so true because what we put into our body it comes out through our skin. I mean, we don't realize our skin is an organ. It's the largest organ of our body and its job is to be a detox organ. So that's why, like, if you have inflammation, if you have any issues with your skin, your skin's trying to communicate with you and be like, Hey, something's not right inside the body. And it's our job to kind of pay attention and go, okay, this isn't right. How can we fix this? And how can we find an no. expert to help us? <laughs> Not to mention that 70% of our immune system is in our gut. So if we're constantly yeah. dealing with illness and sickness, even, you know, beyond acne, then that's something to look about. Our yeah. gut obviously produces neurotransmitters. There's a brain gut connection. So all of this to explore, I think people really need to like dive deep. Uh, last question is what does free flowing health mean to you? I like to ask every guest and get their unique yeah. insights and perspectives. I mean, free flowing health to me means just listening to your body, taking care of yourself and just doing what is right for you. Cause we're all different. We're all individuals and we all have different needs. So just learn what, what your needs are and, you know, start to heal yourself from the inside out. And that's it. That's a great way to end this episode. So thank you so much, Samantha, for your time and stay connected with her, everybody. If you resonate and have a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Free Flowing Health Podcast. Your support means the world to us. Help us grow by leaving a positive rating and review. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this podcast. If you'd like to stay connected, you can find me on social media, 
at Free Flowing Health or visit my website directly, freeflowinghealth.com. Wishing you a happy, healthy, and fulfilling life. Till the next time. This podcast is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only and should not be considered legal, health, or professional advice. We are not responsible for any losses, damages, or liabilities that may arise from the use of this podcast. This podcast is not intended to replace professional or medical advice. Views and opinions expressed by the guest are those of the guests and do not necessarily reflect the view of the host or the free-flowing health team.